We have the ability to perform intricate complex movements, make quick decisions, consider creative abstract thought, and communicate freely with others because our neurons and muscle fibers have the unique ability to generate rapid electrical changes in their membrane. These changes are known as membrane potentials. An alteration in the electrical potential surrounding the cell membrane causes a neuron to produce a nerve impulse or triggers muscle fibers to contract. Neurons and muscle fibers are referred to as excitable cells. When the excitable cell is inactive, it is at its resting potential. Changes in the membrane potential may result in either a graded potential impulses that either excite or inhibit further action, or an action potential, which results in some type of response. In a neuron, it becomes a nerve impulse, and in a muscle fiber, it stimulates contraction. To understand how a membrane potential occurs, we need to first consider the chemicals on either side of the cell membrane. The outside of each cell is bathed in a sodium chloride solution made up of positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chloride ions. Inside the cell, in contact with the cell membrane, are positively charged potassium ions, negatively charged phosphate ions, and anionic proteins. Separated by the cell membrane, these chemicals accumulate charges on either side, creating a difference in electrical potential. The electrical balance on the membrane is altered when ions selectively pass through the cell membrane to the other side, generating a change in membrane potential. Ion channels, tube-shaped proteins across the membrane, allow specific ions to move through the membrane. The direction of ion flow through a channel depends on the difference in concentration of electrical charge action on the ion. Ions passively diffuse through a channel from higher to lower concentration. They are also attracted by opposite charges or repelled by like charges from other charged molecules. Thus, the direction of ion flow depends on the balance between both chemical and electrical forces acting on the ion at any given time. Typically, sodium ions tend to enter the cell through an open sodium channel and potassium ions tend to exit the cell via potassium channels. There are four types of channels through which ions can pass. Leak channels are typically always open. The three types of gated channels, chemically, voltage, or mechanically gated, must open their gate to allow the passage of ions. A leak channel allows only a trickle of sodium or potassium ions to diffuse through the membrane. Leak channels contribute greatly to the generation and maintenance of the resting membrane potential. A chemically gated channel, also referred to as a ligand gated channel, has a receptor associated with it. When its receptor is occupied by a chemical known as a neurotransmitter, the gate on the channel opens, allowing a specific type of ion to diffuse through. The gate will remain open as long as the receptor is occupied. A voltage-gated channel opens at a specific voltage, referred to as the threshold. For example, the threshold for a voltage-gated sodium channel is around negative 55 millivolts. When the membrane voltage increases from its resting state of about negative 70 millivolts to the threshold, the channel gate opens and sodium diffuses through the channel to the other side of the membrane. Some voltage-gated channels open quickly, while others are slow to open. Even though they may reach threshold at the same time, the speed at which they open causes significant changes in membrane potential. Some voltage-gated channels have an additional gate, referred to as an inactivation gate, which temporarily plugs the channel so ions cannot pass through, even if their activation gate is open. Its purpose is to ensure that ions do not pass through the gate at an inappropriate time. Mechanically gated channels open when pressure, touch, or stretch is applied to the membrane. They are found in sensory receptors, located primarily in the skin, to inform the nervous system of mechanical changes in the surface of the body resulting from conditions in its environment. An ion pump is a type of membrane transport protein. 
it requires energy to push ions from an area of lower concentration into an area of higher concentration. The ion pump most important in the maintenance of membrane potential is the sodium-potassium pump. Using ATP as its energy source, it is able to pump three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell at the same time. Leak channels and ion pumps complement each other to maintain a constant electrical potential and level of ion concentration. The resting membrane potential voltage is determined by the concentration of electrically charged ions on either side of the membrane. It is established primarily by leak channels. There are more potassium leak channels than sodium leak channels, so more positively charged potassium ions pass out of the cell than positively charged sodium ions diffuse in. Also, sodium-potassium pumps move more sodium ions out of the cell than potassium ions in. Leak channels and ion pumps complement each other to maintain a constant electrical potential and level of ion concentration. As positively charged ions move out of the cell, they accumulate on the outside of the membrane, giving it a positive charge. The inside of the membrane is electrically negative because the negatively charged phosphate ions and anionic proteins lack channels, so they remain in the cell, and also because more positively charged ions move out rather than in. This establishes an electrical difference or potential on the membrane. Since the inactive cell membrane is negatively charged inside and positively charged outside, it is considered to be polarized. The voltage created by this distribution of ions is known as its resting membrane potential and is maintained everywhere on the cell membrane. The excitable cell remains in this state until it receives a stimulus.